In this episode, I'll be disassembling the donor vehicle, and while that may be disappointing to other Land Rover enthusiasts like me, I wanted to make sure there was a positive outcome to this for somebody outside of this build. As I'm releasing this video, I've already sold this frame and chassis components to another guy who's going to do a father-son project. The son, who's only 16, wants to build a Defender flatbed. So it's going to be a cool project and they wanted the long wheelbase uh, frame and chassis for that project. So that's already left my house and it's on its way to uh, North Carolina right now. At the same time, I'm talking to another guy that may be interested in the rust-free body from this donor. He, uh, he loaned his Range Rover Classic to a friend to go off-roading and the guy proceeded to partially roll the vehicle. So he's got a good frame and chassis, but he just needs a good body. So we haven't uh, finished that sale yet, but it's possible that he'll buy this. So the moral of the story is there's more than one way to save these old classic vehicles. So let's start episode four. This is the body for the ultimate build. I'm gonna defer the painting till later in the process, but all the rust repair and body work and priming has already been done. Now it's time to get the donor disassembled so I can start scavenging parts. So I realize the idea of separating a body from a frame is intimidating and I've only done it a handful of times. but. If you just go through it methodically and you take some pictures and you're careful, you can, anyone can do this. So really, if you ask me, it's a matter of doing an inventory of the whole vehicle and saying what stays with the frame and what stays with the body. So I would just, I would suggest taking one corner at a time and just looking at everything and take pictures and say this stays with the frame, this stays with the body, this stays with the frame, this, and then you find the connections, whether they're electrical connections or plumbing or whatever it is, you got to unhook those connections and then allow those parts to stay with each one. If you could even go as far as tagging things or taking a sharpie and marking everything that stays with the frame with a silver check mark, you know, I don't do that, but whatever it takes. So just pick one corner at a time and just stay with it until you've identified all those items. This stays with the frame, this stays with the body. And then you can always start to lift the body a couple of inches and then see what's still connected and then take that off and then lift the body another inch, see what's connected. You know, just do it very carefully so you don't rip anything off. That is the short answer to separating body from frame. So the idea with this body is twofold. I am going to go around and find all the best parts out of this vehicle, this body, and use it on my build. So for example, uh, both bumpers are better on this vehicle than on my black vehicle. The grill is better, some of these marker lights, some parts in the interior, a couple of door latches, door panels. I'm going to select all the best parts from this body and move it to my build. But there's still gonna be the bulk of this remaining and I'll end up parting this out, this body. And uh, for anybody interested in that, keep an eye out for that in the future. But to, I don't wanna keep this on the lift and it's sitting here with no wheels. So I built a jig to help with that. So I went out and bought a set of four by fours and I cut them out and built and put them together like this and bolted them with carriage bolts down to these wheels that are rated at 750 pounds each. So I put what they call rigid wheels here. They do not uh, pivot. But I put pivoting wheels here on the front so I'll be able, when I push this out of the, of the uh, garage, I'll be able to maneuver it around and I'll park it outside. And when you put something like this together, you assume it's gonna work. 
and you assume it'll be strong enough, but there's no way to know for sure until I put it down on the ground. All right, that seems to work. Well, this is probably the most excited I've been in this entire process. Everything up until now has been disassembly, cleaning, organizing, doing some light repair, but now really starts the process of doing the build. So if you remember, I've got the black vehicle, which is the target, that's going to be the build, and I've got the white vehicle, which is the donor. So this chassis and, and engine behind me here is from the white vehicle, and the black vehicle is, is all around here. So now's the time where I start making those final decisions about what am I going to put together for the one great build. And the original plan is still intact, and that is the white vehicle has 75,000 less miles on it. So right off the bat, it's very likely that parts, mechanical parts, from the white vehicle will be the pick, the preferred choice. But that's, I'm not just going to make that blanket decision. I'm going to go through and look at all the mechanical elements of the white vehicle and make sure that I want to cherry pick those for my build. So for example, this is the engine from the white vehicle, 130,000 miles versus over behind me is the engine from the black vehicle. That's got 204,000 miles. From, I, know, I have no history about these two vehicles, the, ma the uh, mechanical maintenance history, but from what I can tell, the black vehicle looks like the engine in the background over there. It looks like it's never been out, it's never been significantly uh, uh, worked on. I think it's probably 204,000 original miles. Where this vehicle, even though the odometer shows 130,000, these heads have been replaced on this engine, and I see evidence of other uh, repairs and improvements. So this might even be a better engine than 130K. So I'm going to pull these spark plugs and look in there with a bore scope into the cylinders and look at the valves and do some basic checks. And I'm sure this is going to be the, the preferred engine that I'm going to put in the build. And same thing with the transmission. It may or may not have been rebuilt, but it's got 75,000 less miles. So I expect when all of my checks and my investigations are done, I'm going to end up using this engine, this transmission, and the same thing with these axles. Uh, this vehicle, the white vehicle, had new brakes before it got uh, salvaged out. So. I'm probably going to pull the axles over too. So really all the mechanical running gear will come out of that vehicle with 130,000 miles or less. And that will be the mechanical part of my build. So that's where this is headed. I'm going to keep checking and making sure, but that will be very likely to be the answer. So I'm real excited about that. So let's get started checking out this engine. Well, this is great. Yeah, the heads are definitely new and the valves look great on the inside of the cylinders. So I'm just going to put all this back with new gaskets. And I also wanted to uh, dress down the front of the engine to look at the timing chain and gears. I don't know if that's been replaced and if it's not, then I'll do that myself.
the timing chain and gears look original there's a little bit of slack in the chain so that's not very expensive and certainly not difficult at this point so I'm gonna go ahead and replace the timing chain and gears the front seal all the gaskets maybe even the oil pump and it'll be all good to go before I move it over to the uh, build I'm out here with the donor in the driveway and uh, I had mentioned in the first episode that this vehicle was stolen in California and it was partially stripped and not a lot just a little bit and that's why it was salvaged it had a salvage title but check out the uh, the evidence of how the people stole the vehicle this is a I've never stolen a vehicle but you know what you do is you break out the ignition switch the tumbler and all that and you connect these wires and you can start the vehicle so every time i've started this vehicle that's what i do you put these wires together and you touch this one to that one and that's how you start the vehicle so that is it's been that way since i've owned it and uh anyway so it's still a good donor because it's got a lot of great parts that's it for episode four and next episode I'll be taking the frame of the build and start building it up with all the parts. Join me then.